Hello and thanks for checking in with Crossroads with me Lee Bannister and a very happy new year to you from all of us here at Big Centre TV. Now Crossroads is the iconic Midlands soap opera which ran from 1964 to 1988 and again from 2001 to 2003 and in the early days of Big Centre TV you'll probably remember that we ran many of the early episodes from the programme's first decade beginning in 1965. Now last week we took another look at a couple of episodes from the 60s and one from the 70s. We also had the first part of our brand new and exclusive interview with Jane Rossington. Well we'll be checking in again with Jane shortly and then our three episodes straight after the show will take us firmly into the 70s with episodes 1886, 2583 and 2602. Now episode 1886 is from March 1973 and the synopsis tells us that Vera, the victim of some sinister phone calls, is encouraged by Sig Gilbert to confide in him. Timothy and Kevin's bet to catch Meg continues though she has thwarted them both by disappearing to the Hotel Droitwich for the week. And Vera's watch is stolen. Mm. Episode 2583 is from August 1976. Now, Glenda and Vera discuss Rita Witten's trouble stirring behaviour. Mrs. Witten takes her suspicions of theft to Sandy, but he's reluctant to involve the police. And then episode 2602 is from September 1976, while Meg tries to decide whether she's either being blackmailed or bribed by Sir Hector Prince. She expends her wrath about the potential scandal on Rex Oliver. Uh, Hugh appalls David with his plans for a new disco at the motel, but that's still all to come. For now, let's settle down in the company of Crossroads' very own Jane Rossington for more of her memories and of her time on the Midlands' very own serial. <laughs> Your first day. On, uh, on set or in the, uh, in the studio, everybody was sworn to secrecy, weren't they? Nobody knew what was going on. I walked up and I didn't know where to go and I looked around, there was nobody else, I couldn't see anybody else. And I went up to this extremely glamorous lady with the hair and, you know, the false eyelashes and said, I'm here to see Reg Watson about Crossroads. And she said, what? And I said, Crossroads. And she said, no, there's nothing of that here. And I said, oh, well, I was told to come, really. And so I didn't know what to do. I was sort of hovering around. Anyway, thank God, Reg walked in and said, ah, there you are, we've been looking for you all over the place. And I said, well, they told me, and he said, oh, they're all sworn to secrecy. They're not supposed to talk about it or anything. <laughs> so come this way, this way. And suddenly I was into it. Yeah. yeah. So what were your first impressions of sort of the, the main members of the cast, you know, Nolly, Roger, Beryl Johnson? Well, they're all, yes, Beryl, yeah, dear Beryl. Um, they were super, well, I loved, adored Roger. Mm. Okay, my brother, he was super, absolutely gorgeous. And I loved him dearly. Um, you see, they did. They couldn't use this all at the same time. Well, they did use this all at the time, same time because it was the six. It was that was more than six, eight. There was eight of yeah. us, but the, every episode would have probably have one new person in it who was yeah. only in for one or two or maybe a couple of weeks episodes. See, bear in mind, a couple of weeks is ten episodes. Quite a lot can happen in that oh, time. Yeah. So that's how it was. So we were perpetually learning lines. And when you looked at the script, you looked at the page, it was covered in writing. Mm. Now, nowadays, you would never see that. It's all instructions. You know, she looks up, she looks through the window, yes. she thinks, she changes her mind, she goes to the car, she opens the door, she shuts it, and all that. And that would be a whole page, maybe two pages, but it won't be dialogue. Mm. But it would be just as interesting and take up as much time. But in our day, we didn't have that. We didn't have any filming. So everything had to be done in the studio. And we also had a problem, I think, with the technical side, which I didn't never understood. Because we used to film on kind of not videotape. Video wasn't invented. It would be film, wouldn't it? It was some sort of film. Or yeah. telecine. That's it, a telerecording. Telerecording. Film would film and on TV And very screen. difficult to edit. Mm. That's why we had no editing. Because... They always said to me, well, what happens is the, the sound, if you say that's the tape, the sound goes on there and yeah. the vision goes on there or whatever it was. Yeah. So that if you cut the tape, it didn't join up. You know, you had people yeah. go, or oh. <laughs> <Whatever. laughs> <That's it, yes. laughs> So it was about, let me think, we started in 64. We went into colour in 69 which I thought was a, was a great move because we all look much better in colour because black and white isn't a very mm. kind 
um, it's, you know. No, no. Of course, you also moved premises when you went into Colour. Yeah. You moved from Aston into the yes. centre of Birmingham, yes, into the ATV centre. Well, we had the ATV centre, which was fabulous, right in the centre of Birmingham. And I think the Birmingham Council, it was council land, and they, they let it to um, ATV on a peppercorn rent. Mm -hmm. For about, I think they had a very long lease. I think they had about 35 years on the lease. And, because um, I know more about leases now. <laughs> and uh, anyway, it, it was super. And they built a fabulous studio w in this space. They'd only been, and they had a big studio, which was the studio really for all the big television shows. You know, I can't remember what we had, but. All whatever. the audience shows, new yes. faces. Yeah, all those. And the game shows and yeah. so on and things like that, terrific. And we were in the second studio, and there was a tiny new studio, so you had three studios, and lots of dressing rooms, yeah. and it was really st almost state of the art. Um, and I remember one thing they had done, it was a clever idea, but it, <laughs> all these ideas, architects don't always know how things are run. And the, in the makeup room, they'd, we had these lovely long tables and all these beautiful mirrors, and you could have your hair done and everything. But they cut some holes in the top, and the idea was you could put something underneath and you could put tissues down there. Right. Well, what happens, of course, you put something down and it goes straight through the hole. <laughs> now, your character was Jill. Yes. With many surnames. Well, yeah, well, I got through a few. I started yes. off as Richardson. Yes. And then I was... Stan, what was Stan's other name? What was Harvey. That? Harvey, that's yes. it. Yes, of course it was. Harvey Household. I was, uh, yes, Jill Harvey. For a long time I was Jill, Jill Harvey. A uh, long, happy time. That was super. With dear, dear Stan, uh, Ted. And then, oh, Ted, that's right, nearly had a nervous breakdown and he said, I can't cope anymore. I want some time off. And I, I think, actually, I want to leave the show. Because he did eight years. Mm. And he, was, he did a lot of the hard work. You know, he was one of the people who did a lot of talking, yeah. so hard work. And, uh, and then, I, then I met um, dear Tony Adams, who became, but I didn't, he had been in the show for earlier, and I'd missed him. He was in for two weeks when I was off on holiday or something. Oh, right. Because that was another problem. They hadn't worked out quite what to do. When you were in a show like that, you know, if you wanted some time off, you'd got to be written out. Mm. I'd gone to see a distant relative or something, which was boring for them because they, if they wanted to use you and you weren't there. So we were all having great difficulty flogging on and thinking, oh, I'm dying for a day off or whatever. So then it was only when the ITA, Independent, Independent Television Authority, started to decide in their wisdom that really, you know, this was far too popular and they weren't interested in it and what the hell. They didn't understand why people were watching it. They thought it was not good. So they started to say, well, you can't have so many episodes. So we were restricted then and pushed down to three episodes a week. Well, actually, that was great because that was when Jack was running it and Jack said, and we were all talking about it one day and he said, Right, we're going to have to do three a week. This is going to be most awkward. Do we do two and a half and what? We were trying to work out how to allocate this extra time. But in fact, what we found out was that it's very easy to do four. So we just carried on doing four. Yeah. And that meant we gathered a week. Yes. So every 13 weeks, we'd have an, so many extras in the can, mm. we could all have a holiday. So instead of having to say, please, can I have you know, a week off? Please, can I go and see my whatever? Instead of that, you knew that you were going to have two weeks off at Christmas, two weeks off at Easter, six weeks off in the summer, mm -hmm. and two weeks off in the autumn, That's which was fantastic. And in that time, you were supposed to be doing things like going shopping. This is when we then ha we didn't have to provide our own clothes then. Yeah. And we had a wardrobe and all that sort of thing. So we did all that. Mm. And, that was the, and they'd do a bit of filming. That's when the filming really started. So you knew that you didn't always get six weeks off, mm. you perhaps got four and a half weeks off and then you were filming for a week yeah. or whatever. But it was, it, it was giving us spaces in mm. the time scale to do that. And that helped the show, I think, a lot. Mm. Tell me about the pigeons. Oh, yes. Wilf. Yes. Early days, we were at the Gas Street Basin on a freezing cold um, winter's day. 
and I was go he was going to show me all about pigeons and we had so we had these pigeons all flying you know and he was going to get them out and show me how to hold them yeah. and throw them up in the air and when it came to the crunch he said I can't do it I can't face touching these things <laughs> so drama 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 anyway so I said well look shall I get it out and hold it say is this right as if you've just told me can you come in at the scene like that I said oh yes good idea so we did that but it really was it was lovely. I, I mean, I'm not terribly good with... Well, I've got better at... You get better at the, all these things as oh, yeah. you get older. But, I, you know, I can pick up a chicken now. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I was finding it difficult myself. And, I, you know, they were fluttering. They didn't want to be picked up. <laughs> but anyway, we did it. And yeah. it was fine, but it was freezing cold. OK, time for a quick break now. But when we come back, we'll return to the lounge to hear more from Jane Rossington. Don't check out. We'll be back in a few minutes. <laughs> Welcome back to our New Year check-in at the Crossroads Motel. Now remember, after this show, we've got three back-to-back -back episodes from Crossroads Heyday in the 1970s. But before then, let's return to the lounge and hear more in our brand new interview from Crossroads' very own leading lady, Jane Rossington. So we go through to the 80s now, we've touched on it already, Nolly left. Yes. That sort of changed the whole dynamic Ooh. of the whole show, didn't it? Oh, it did. Jack didn't want her to go, but he'd obviously been leaned on so heavily. And we just sort of carried on, and she's not that. Then suddenly, in the script, we were doing some more filming, and we were going to Venice. And I think it was when we were... He, that's right. Tony was going to propose to me in Venice. Mm. It was going to be romantic and wonderful. And let's think. So we're in Venice... And that, we walk into this place where we're staying, and we look up, and there is Nolly standing. It's almost like Romeo and Juliet. She's up there in a window, and we're going, oh, et cetera. And she comes down, and we have a scene. And she's not, we think she's died, you see, also, because nobody knew what happened to her. Yeah. And so all, all these rumors about it, and I don't know what they said, but I don't think it's decided on, you know, it's whether were they going to kill her off or were they not, you see. I think in the series it was only your character that knew what had happened, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, I'm sure and it was. Because yeah. I don't think Tony was party to that mm. scene. Anyway, so the scene we, that we did where, where Tony was going to propose, we had a tiny problem in as much as there'd been dramas at the, um, back at the whatever, and they were all on strike. And we, we wanted to take... We wanted to take some prop people to put, do some props. But we were obliged to take the, the electrics. We didn't actually need them. We yes. had to take a crew of... Eight or twelve. Union rules. Union rules. I think yeah. they all went first class. No. And I went first class, but only because they ran out of seats in, in the other bit. <laughs> so, and I was really cross because I had scrambled egg on toast for my breakfast on the plane in first class, and they all had much better food in the, in the ordinary, you know, where oh. we all usually are. <laughs> I was a bit miffed oh. about that. Anyway, we, are, we, we got there and we came to this place and we were going to gaze all around beautiful Venice and he was going to hold my hand, it was going to be romantic, and drink the champagne. Well, there was two glasses on the table, I think, but that was all. Oh. Because if anyone... No, there were no glasses, that's right. There was nothing on the table and we were not allowed to put anything on it. Mm. So all our... We had to change the dialogue a bit. And we, spoke, we just sit there by this empty table or we'll lean on it or whatever and gaze into the future and across the, oh, isn't that beautiful and all this kind of thing. But we couldn't do anything. Mm. We couldn't eat, we couldn't drink. Oh, we did another scene where we're right up on top of the Campolini, which is the, the clock tower, yes. in St Mark's Square that looks straight down. Right? <laughs> now, we had to do that at six in the morning because it gets so crowded. And we have to climb up and Jack and the film crew are on the top of St Mark's with the, the you know, with the, with the horses. Yes. He's, he's up there with the horses and a camera, and we're up here. We're not that far away, mm. but we had a, a walkie-talkie thing which promptly broke down. Yeah. We then had people running up and down the stairs and going, and we were saying, 
when I wave, and then Jack found a, micro, um, uh, a megaphone, and he said, I'll give you a shout, and then I'll, we I'll drop it. He's got a big something, and he waves it down, and that's when we had to start. Anyway, then as we got up there, and they're lining everything up, they keep on saying, come forward <laughs> through this thing. So we keep coming forward, and we're getting very close to this guardrail. Oh. And it's not a, pro you know, it's not like up here. It's down there, and it's slightly sloping. And and we're and we're supposed to be gazing into the distance. And he's saying, "I love you, and I love you." And I think, "Oh no, you know, it was all, it was all, you know, brief encounter type stuff." <laughs> and uh, and we keep getting closer and closer to this thing. And eventually, we touch it, and I'm hanging onto it for grim life. And if you dared to sort of do that, oh, it was just straight down. Yeah. And anyway, my heart's beating, thinking, "Just let's get this scene in the can for, you know, before we have a <laughs> dreadful accident." And at which point I became aware of the fact there's more people up there. And it's the, the public are coming up. Oh, right. And the, I don't know how they've managed to get up, but they have. They hadn't stopped them. And mm. they were coming out of the conning tower, like a bit like a sort of Monty Python sketch, you know, people climbing out. <laughs> and then going, ooh, and clinging on to bits. <laughs> and it wasn't my, and we finished the scene, and they were told, shh. And we just managed to do it, and we're sort of saying, I love you, I love you, and gaze into the distance and uh, holding hands, I don't take the other hand off him. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. It was hysterical. And Jack had been saying, come on. <laughs> anyway, we did it. And we did it quite quickly, looking back. And then we tried to get back down. Well, they were all coming up. Ooh. And in the end, there, was, there seemed to be like 50 people on this very tight thing. And Somebody, fortunately, started it with a deep voice and said, Will everybody go back down? There's, there's too many people up here. <laughs> it's a nightmare. Oh, dear. And I struggled away from that. And anyway, it was terrific fun. We yeah. did that all in about five days, four <laughs> days, maybe. Right. And that was super. Oh. So, of course, through the 80s, we're kind of coming towards the end, I suppose. Yeah. Many changes happened. Well, right? all the changes were we had new producers. Um, new, and they had completely different ideas. There was one very nice chap, and I can't remember his name, Patrick something. He was, I got on very well with him, he was fine, and I thought I'd be sacked, but no, I wasn't. And we continued the story of Jill and Adam, one minute we're married, next minute we're not, and we're not speaking. The moment we got married, or it looked like we were getting married, we split. <laughs> and. As I came, I, I always joke that we're going just back to the beginning. When I came down the aisle the first time with Ted, um, as I came down, I, they, we stopped for a second and I said, I tell you what, that, this is it. When I get to the bottom, you'll be leaving me because <laughs> they say it's too boring. You can't have people in love and it's, it's all going to be drama, Exactly, it, yeah? Yeah, exactly. So let me think. Now we had Patrick and he didn't stay very long. He went off and did something else. And then, I think we had somebody else, I can't remember, but we, then we had William Smithhurst, yeah. who was running the arches at the time. And from my point of view, he was marvellous, because he didn't just, my character had always been told to me, like, well, all the characters in the early days of theatre and television, you were the juve lead or you were the lead. Yeah. The lead was a little bit older and had a stronger storyline. And the juve lead was just a girl, and you could play it how you liked. Yeah. It, was no, it was never given any character, no, you know, not particularly. And so I'd just been the daughter. Suddenly with William, I had quite funny scenes. I had lots of scenes with Paul Henry, and Paul Henry used to outwit me regularly. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd be standing there with a kind of... I'm not quite sure if I won the argument there. One of those <laughs> sort of... And it was fun doing oh. that because I was doing a bit of acting as opposed yeah. to just doing it. And for me, he was very good. Mm. He was very good. And then suddenly, out of the blue... In fact, we'd broken up for our six weeks holiday. Mm. And I think we were about two weeks into it. And this bombshell was announced in one of the papers that it was coming off. They'd never had a board meeting. They'd never... Made, had any decisions about it. And anyway, it was just the chap who, it was, um, I can't remember his name, who was the... Andy Allen. Andy Allen, right. Uh, it went off, when the press office, and again, I don't think there was anybody in the press office, were asked by a person, can you confirm that this is true? Sort of said, hmm? Um, yeah, because there was nobody there to say, mm. what are you talking about? <laughs> just a minute. 
and there'd been no evaluation or anything. So, and I think Andy had always wanted it off. It wasn't his cup of tea. And I mean, I think he's quite a nice bloke, but he, 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 he would have been quite glad to see the back of us because he felt that we were occupying too much studio space, even though we were still in the small, the me, not the big studio mm. at all. Um, and anyway, who needs a studio when you can film now? You don't need them. Well, yeah. No, you only need them occasionally. You need them for the news, don't you? That's right. But that's about it. And uh, so I think there was a bit of that going on. And they were thinking, oh, it's tired. It's no, we're losing ratings. Well, we weren't losing ratings. Mm. And then, of course, the rest is history. You look back on it fondly. Oh, yes. Yeah. Very much so. And I've got some very, I mean, very good friends out of it. And it's been marvellous. I've been a very lucky person. You know, no two ways about it. Mm. I think that's a perfect way to a finish. <laughs> Jane, thank you. Thank you. Massive thank you to Jane from me for spending so much time reminiscing about her time on Crossroads. And that's about all we have time for on this New Year Crossroads check-in. Don't check out just yet though, because for the next hour and a half, you can sit back and enjoy three back-to-back -back episodes of Crossroads from the 1976, 1886, 2583 and 2602. Now I'm off to find Damie Turtle now to see if she's washed me mug. I'll see you soon. Crossroads Motel, can I help you? Mm -hmm.